Mercantile Investment Trust looks for opportunities among UK stocks outside of the FTSE 100 index. It's one of the largest UK equity investment trusts and has a history stretching back more than 130 years. To find out how it picks stocks, I'm joined by its fund manager, Guy Anderson. So investors are looking at prospects for companies in 2022 and beyond. So which stocks in your portfolio are you most excited about as the world hopefully shifts focus from the pandemic to a more brighter future? Sure. So the the area that I'm particularly excited about at the moment is those companies that I believe have come through the pandemic in a strong position not necessarily completely unscathed, but which have come through in a strong position and which are now positioned perhaps better than they were before the pandemic. So potentially in a stronger competitive position and where we can see the prospects um, for further growth and indeed for market share gains. And so I think a great example of this is Dunelm, which is the homewares uh, retailer, which has traded actually incredibly well through a period of of huge disruption to their operations. So a period in which the the retail estate has been closed for, you know, in in aggregate, potentially over a third of the last year, their estate's been closed, but they have really focused on their omni-channel expertise. So in other words, um, improving their web capabilities and allowing um, customers to order online. And by improving those capabilities, they've made huge improvements in um, their market share there. So their market share has grown um, through the pandemic around one and a half percentage points. So it's around nine, nine and a half percent now. And we can see the opportunity for that market share to continue growing as all of that hard work that they've put in place to improve the business credentials will stand them in great stead um, for the future. So Mercantile has been described as the home of tomorrow's UK market leaders. So is there a list of characteristics that a company must have in order for it to be considered for your portfolio? So there's not a there's not a sort of predetermined list of characteristics that you know, every single co- every single company in the portfolio must have this list of ten characteristics. But the way I would I would summarise it as saying we are looking for what we think of as fundamentally strong businesses. So those are businesses that have a good solid competitive positioning, and so because of that competitive positioning, are able to generate good margins. In other words, they can turn their revenues into profits and cash flow and that they operate in attractive end markets. So we're looking for businesses that are in growing end markets because then they can can generate their revenue, they can turn that into cash, and then they can reinvest that cash in order to drive more future growth. And that is ultimately the key thing for us. Those are the key attributes that we we seek. Yeah. So you, you focus on companies outside of the FTSE 100. What happens when you're invested in a company and it's you know it either becomes a market leader or it grows big enough to actually qualify for the FTSE 100 index at that point do you hold or do you sell so that, that's really i guess the sort of the sign of success for us and we're, we're we're very pleased when that happens but it but it is a question of what should we do at that point in time and the way we approach it actually is fairly simple so we don't become forced sellers when a company is promoted into the FTSE 100 we believe that we made this investment when it was a mid cap or a small cap business as long as our investment thesis our investment case is still valid we'll be happy to continue to hold that investment The one thing that we do consider, however, is how much of the portfolio in aggregate are we holding in the FTSE 100 versus the mid and the small cap indices, so the FTSE 250 or or the small cap. And we, we, we always work to sort of ensure that the percentage allocated to the FTSE 100 never just grows and grows. Um, and so we limit it, we tend to limit it to sort of a mid teens percentage, which is where it's sitting today. It's around 13 or 14%. Because ultimately, if we allowed it to grow without selling some of our, our, our success stories, it would effectively just become a too big a component of the portfolio. So in a way, actually, it becomes a, a competition for capital amongst those, those, those winners. So how often are you making changes to your portfolio? Because, you know, for example, you, know, you hold some house builders, that sector seems to have lost momentum as investors are concerned about the end of the stamp duty holiday, whether that will cause house prices to fall. You know, so would a risk like that prompt you to sell out? No. So what one of the um, one of the things that we're very 
careful about doing and of course we don't always absolutely don't always get this get this right but we're looking to differentiate with our investments between what we think of as temporary factors and structural factors so a temporary factor uh which which could be a real factor it could be something that could cause a dip for a quarter or 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 even longer which could impact the business for a period of time but we don't think structurally alters its long-term direction of travel and if we see temporary changes we absolutely don't change our investment positions because we are looking to make investments um, over you know, three, four, five, six years. That's our sort of target time horizon. And most of the companies in the portfolio today have been in there for between three and five years. So we are making those quite long dated decisions. To take the house builders example, if we thought that it was a signal that perhaps we were at the top of the cycle there, or that the valuations were had reached a level where we, we no longer saw a compelling future return, then of course we would be selling those and, and recycling the capital elsewhere. But in this instance, we actually we still think yes, there was clearly a period of of, of supernormal demand, if you were, if you if you will, in the run up to that stamp duty holiday ending. But actually, the, the fundamentals of that market are still very robust. Now, there's still a lot of demand. Um, you know, financing is is clearly available um, with uh, interest rates where where they are, and um, we expect those businesses, and particularly the ones in which we're invested, which have have typically been quite active in the land market even through the pandemic. We think their their future returns will continue to look attractive. So, how has Mercantile Investment Trust performed over the long term, and has the strategy changed at all since it was launched? So, so Mercantile was launched in 1884. So, um, it would be it would be quite something <laughs> if I was able to say the strategy had never had never changed. But actually, in in many ways, at the core, the strategy isn't that different. So, the 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 current approach, which has been in place since 1994, which is to focus on long term capital growth by investing in a diversified portfolio of UK mid and mid and small cap listed listed securities that's been in place for you know nearly nearly 30 years now but actually when when mercantile was originally established it was looking to generate long term capital growth by investing in what were then emerging markets so of as it turns out north, north america back then um, and the idea of doing um, detailed due diligence and understanding the businesses in which we're investing and making the long-term decisions, that has been continuous throughout. Well, Guy, thank you very much for joining us. Great. Thank you. If you want to catch up on the other videos we've done with Guy about the Mercantile Investment Trust, just click the links in the description below. Thanks for watching. <laughs>